people, welcome to Economics with Ellie. This is me and I am Ellie and I'm super happy because I've reached 100 subscribers. So thank you very much for subscribing to my channel. Um, the awesome comments and everything has just made me carry on and that is why I'm here making this one. So Economics Explained using tomato sauce. It's really something that I've wanted to explain for a very long time. And because it's the 100 video party, I've decided today is the day. So, what is economics? Now, it's not really that complicated. And I'm going to explain it to you today using tomato sauce. But before there was tomato sauce, we had to start somewhere. So, there is a little farmer and this is now hundreds of thousands of years ago before money existed and he had his shelter or his house and he had his little crop of tomatoes growing over there and then he had some chickens for eggs his neighbor over here also had the shelter also had his crops growing and also had chickens and these two guys had a lack of chat every morning while they were getting their eggs and getting their tomatoes. But this man over here was very good at growing tomatoes. His tomatoes grew lots. This guy on the other end somehow had a knack for chickens. And his chickens just lay more eggs and just grew faster and somehow he was just a better chicken farmer. So the two of them came here to the fence and they started chatting. And this guy said, I will give you three tomatoes a day if you give me one of your eggs. And so they started trading with each other. And this was the very first marketplace. The first marketplace right here was across the fence where they started swapping. This guy had an absolute advantage in growing tomatoes. And this guy had an absolute advantage breeding or feeding chickens, raising chickens. And they started swapping tomatoes for chickens. This is long before money existed. The idea of money didn't even exist. There was no money. So what they did is they had a barter econo economy. They bartered. They swapped things for things without involving money. Barter economy. But it became very complicated because there were more neighbors. And everybody grew something very, very well. And so eventually, this guy swapped all his tomatoes for eggs, but this guy didn't want tomato. He actually wanted, let's say, a mealy. Okay, so this guy wanted a mealy. This guy only offered tomatoes. This guy offered chickens. And so they started getting very confused with how many mealies and how many tomatoes and how many chickens or chicken eggs and what's worth what and this guy didn't even want tomatoes and this guy didn't want mealies so they got very confused and that is where money started so they started trading a thing rather than the goods itself and they started trading with weird things like shells beach shells and um rocks and whatever weird things until eventually they found gold and they th thought, you know what, gold is valuable, let's just trade in gold. And that's where the gold standard comes from. They said, okay, I'm going to swap my tomatoes for gold, and I'm going to use the gold to buy things. And it just made trade so much easier. So this is our tomato farmer, and he's over there. Now, to explain economics, there are factors of production. So there are... There is labor, which are the farm workers, for example, or the laborers working in factories. Then there's the big boss that started this whole farming enterprise, and that is entrepreneurship. So this is my light bulb, because an entrepreneur, entrepreneur has this light bulb moment where he has this great idea for a company or a business, and he uses his ingenuity and his brain power to start a business. So that is the light bulb moment, entrepreneurship. Then there's capital, which is capital goods. It's what you can use in your business. For example, computers and tractors and fancy, fancy stuff. And last but, last, last but not least, we have natural resources. 
natural resources, also known as land. So there's the land or the natural resources that our tomato farmer farms on. He might employ some people, which is labor. He's the entrepreneur because he had this light bulb moment. And we have capital goods, which is the tractor on the farm. Okay, so that is factors of production. Now, as the factors of production for the tomato farmer improved, um, he started specializing, he became very clever. And there we have our bottle of tomato sauce being produced by this very clever entrepreneur. But this started happening everywhere. So countries started trading. Now I have to draw a world map. Okay, here's Africa. And there's Europe and Australia and there we have the Americas. Okay. I'm not a very good sketch artist. Um, <laughs> bear with me. So now this now countries started becoming like the neighbors trading. So South Africa, for example, is very good with um, let's say gold, and America is very good with products that we want to buy. So they started swapping with each other, and this is like the the two neighbors, except now it's countries having absolute advantages and countries swapping things. And this big picture over here is called macroeconomics, macro. Because now we're talking about the government and what the government is doing to help the tomato farmers over here. And we're talking about exchange rates, like we are swapping dollars for rands and what is the exchange rate. And we are talking about trade deficit, deficits, like how much is going into the country versus how much is going out of the country. So that is macroeconomics. But right here where the two people are standing at the fence talking to each other deciding how to swap their products that is micro microeconomics with microeconomics we have supply and demand so supply and demand says demand and supply and here we have price and here we have quantity and it says that the higher the price goes, so the demand, how many people want something, like tomatoes, the higher the price goes, the less people will want to buy the product. And this is micro, micro. So if you take it small in back, it's microeconomics. Then, of course, we have tomato sauce. As soon as you think of brying a lacquer piece of bourgeois on the fire, there's our grill and our bourgeois, then you want tomato sauce, or maybe chakalaka, but let's deal with it, maybe mustard, to go with your bourgeois. Now, as soon as you have bourgeois, your demand for tomato sauce will go up. And that means that it is a complementary product, because the demand for this one increases the demand for this one. So they are complementary products. However, if you also have a can of wonderful chakalaka over here and a thing of mustard over here, those make your demand for tomato sauce go down. So as they go up, this one goes down. And what that causes, they are supplementary, supplementary products. So you can swap the one for the other. So complementary means as soon as you have bourgeois, you want tomato sauce. Com supplement, complements, they are complements where the chakalaka is the supplement. You can substitute tomato sauce for mustard, for example. Whew, what else do we want to quickly run through? Also, economies of scale. The more and more and more, so we have a fixed cost where you have your factory that produces tomatoes and you have to pay for this factory. It doesn't matter what. So let's say you're paying for this factory 10,000 Rand a month but you only produce one bottle of tomato sauce. Then that bottle of tomato sauce is going to cost you 10,000, and let's say 10 Rand for the bottle. Whereas if you produce 10,000 bottles of tomato sauce, each bottle will cost you 11 Rand because somebody has to pay for the factory. And the more bottles of tomato sauce you produce, the less each new bottle of tomato sauce has to cover the factory cost. So that is economies of scale. The more you produce, the more your fixed cost of the factory goes down. Okay, I think that is quite a mouthful and more than enough to keep you busy with. 
um, once you see how things so then we have the flow the flow so here we have the guy producing tomato and there we have the government making rules and here we have private households eating the tomato sauce and you can have a look at what everybody gives to each other to make this whole system work so for example households buy the tomato sauce but they pay tax on it they pay VAT 15% nowadays they give that 15 to the government what does the government do the government gives households things like street lamps okay and then here they make a profit so they pay tax they get things in return they swap money there's a lot of things happening and this is all economics so thank you very much for watching thank you for subscribing and leaving wonderful comments uh, from now on, whenever you think of an economic term, try and figure out how it fits in with the guy that started producing tomatoes. Thank you. Okay, bye!